So number eight then, the last question in paper one of the 2021 Advanced Higher Maths resource paper. Nine marks for, find the particular solution to this differential equation, this second order differential equation. Well, there are three stages. First, you solve the homogeneous equation. That's the equation in which you've only got these y terms. So it's equal to zero at this side. Then you find a solution that would actually provide this type of result. Then the third stage is you put them both together to get the general solution and use the initial conditions here to get the particular solution. Well, first of all, the complementary function, the one that solves the homogeneous equation. Now, so what you put down is the auxiliary equation made up from the three coefficients. That's a one, so m squared plus just an m minus a six equals zero. Now that doesn't get you a mark. Now you don't need to state any of this, but I'll just mention where that comes from. If you have to find something that solves the equation equal to zero, well, the only way you could have a function and differentiate it and differentiate it again and yet get it all to add up to zero would be if you had some function that just kept regurgitating itself. So what you do for this stage is you assume you've got something in the form e to the mx because that'll just keep regurgitating itself but popping m's out each time. So the first derivative will be m times it. The next derivative will be m times that again, m squared times it so that when you feed it in, you'll end up with this. You'll end up with m squared e to the mx plus m e to the mx minus 6 e to the mx. And of course, you've got a common factor there, so you take out that part, leaving e to the mx. Now, that can never equal zero. The exponential approaches the x-axis, but never reaches it. So since that can never equal zero, that must be the part that equals zero. So that's why you put that down, because you're just assuming the answers must look like this. So, go ahead and solve this then. Well, that must mean that, factorise it, m, m, that must be with a difference of one, it must be the three and the two. And for that plus in the middle, it must be plus the three minus the two. There's still no marks though. So you've got two solutions. You've got m is negative three, or you've got m is two. Now you get the first mark, which means that your complementary function, the complementary function, which I'll call y with a c, can be made up of, remember the form of it was e to the mx, I should have left that part there. So it could have been e to the negative 3x, it could have been e to the 2x, either of them would work, and they would both work together, and any multiple of them would work, because if you multiply something that gives zero, it still gives zero. So you could have any number of, I'll put that one first, e to the 2x, and any number of e to the negative 3x. That's worth a mark. That's your complementary function. You feed that into this, and it'll give you zero as an answer. Just shift it up there, so there's room for the next part. Now, the second part. What would actually produce this, then? This feeding in for y would produce zero. What would produce this? Well, if that's to produce this and it's derivative, it'd have to look something like that to begin with. So for what you call your particular integral, I'll call it yp, it'll have to be of that form. It won't necessarily be a 35, but it'll have to be e to the 2x. So I'll put that down. It'll have to be an e to the 2x if it's going to produce an e to the 2x. But I can't use it. Because if I put some number of e to the 2x into this, it'll come to zero. What you do in that case is you multiply it by an x, and then it could be some number of that instead. That would be, hopefully, the form of the particular integral. That's the first mark. Now I need to feed it in. Well, that means I need its derivatives. And I'll just save some writing just by using dash. So that's going to be, now it's a product. So that's a bit of a paste. So this part first then, that'll just be C. So C e to the 2x plus, now leave that alone. Luckily e just stays the same, except it's a function of a function, so it multiplies by two. So two Cx e to the 2x. Now what's the next derivative? Well, this one, that'll just be 2cx to the 2x. And we're back to that product again. So the first part would be the this part, which is 2c, e to the 2x, which is handy because it can join that. Then leave that alone, but multiply it by 2. 4cx e to the 2x. Now doing that gets a mark. 
finding the two derivatives. Now you just need to feed this into that. I should really have tidied that up first, maybe. 4c e to the 2x plus 4c x e to the 2x. And I'll pop it down there instead. Now we need to feed that back in and see if it works. So I just need one of the second derivative. So just this here. So 4c e to the 2x, 4c x e to the 2x. One of this, the first derivative. That's just a c e to the 2x and a 2cx e to the 2x, but minus 6 of this, the original one, cx e to the 2x, and that whole lot should come to 35 e to the 2x. Now, there's no mark for doing that. Now, here we're just hoping that. Notice, this lot should just add up to an e, not an xe. So hopefully they'll disappear, fingers crossed. So you've got 4 of cx, 2 of cx, but minus 6 of cx, so they go. So you are only left with the e terms. So what have you got all together? You've got 4c and you've got a single c, that's 5c. So 5c e to the 2x is 35. So it's all worked out nicely, in which case the 5c is 35. So straight away, the c, whoops, the c must be 7. Now you get a mark for that. But you don't get a mark for stating the, the final result. That means that yp must be 7x. 7x e to the 2x. Feeding that into this will produce that. So shift that up there. Now, the final bit. Right. That solves the equation equal to 0. That solves the equation equal to this. So the two together will still solve this equation. So that's what you're going to put down next, the general solution. The general solution will be the sum of the two of them. I'll put that one first. So AE to the 2x, BE to the negative 3x, and 7xE to the 2x is the general solution. I'll just put GS there, maybe. Now, stating that's worth a mark, but now you need to find these, because that's just the general one. You want the particular one that starts with these initial conditions. Those are the values at x equals zero. Well, I could just feed the first condition in just now. First condition, condition was when x is zero, y is five. So five is equal to, so that'll be a e to the zero plus b e to the, that'll just be zero. And that'll just be zero because you're multiplying by a zero. Now what that does is that'll produce a little equation in a and b because e to the zero is just one so that says a plus b is five so i'll just write this here a plus b equals five now the second equation the derivative is 12 so i need the derivative so i'll have to do dy by dx so dy by dx equals well that's easy enough that's just multiply by two two a e to the two x that's just multiply by negative three Negative 3b e to the negative 3x. There's a wee nuisance, a wee product there. So it'll be do this part first, so that'll be 7 e to the 2x. And then it'll be, leave that alone, but multiply this by 2, 14x e to the 2x. Now doing that's worth a mark. Now I can use the second condition. When x was 0, the derivative was 12. Well, that means 12 is equal to. 2a e to the 0, 3b e to the 0, 7e to the 0, and that's just 0. Now, that gives me another pair of equations, because that's just 2a minus 3b plus 7. That tells me that 2a minus 3b, take the 7 across, should equal 5 again. So I've got a pair of equations here and two variables. So we'll, I'll just put the work over here. So if you combine them, I think I'll actually do the, the B, even though it's a bigger number, just because that way I can add them. So if I do this, if I do 3 of 1 and add on number 2, I'll get this. If I do 3 of 1, I'll have 3A and 2A makes 5A. I'll have 3 minus 3 is 0. I'll have 15 and 5 is 20. So that means that A is equal to 4. Then if I substitute a equals 4 into the easier ones, 1, 
I'll just straight away that gives you B must equal 1. Getting that pair is worth a mark. Now you've got the particular solution. Just put it all together here. Because you know what A and B are. So go back to this. So it must be Y equals 4E to the 2X plus E to the negative 3X plus 7XE to the 2X. For the final mark.